Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to my presentation, allowing hybrid system to support weak rate in rural areas of Nepal, the case of Mustang district. Actually, this uh, research was carried out uh, 18 months before as a, like an academic practice uh, when I was, was studying in Germany uh, 18 months before. Yeah, today I think our time is a bit strict, so I will try to be a little bit fast. Okay, now let's this is the outline of my presentation. First of all, uh, the backgrounds of, uh, and uh, the response behind this uh, research. After that, objective of the study, then I will switch to the operational strategy of the proposed system on which my uh, uh, analysis and research is based upon. And after that, the wind data analysis and the selection of turbine model, I will be discussing <coughs> on it because it's like a kind, I feel it's important to uh, let you know about this issue here. And finally, uh, after that, I will be discussing about the wind hydro system sizing. And finally, I will be switching on to the different chapters, final, uh, financial analysis, and finally, I will come up with small conclusions and recommendations. Okay, now back down. So let's discuss about the electricity supply in Nepal. Maybe some of you do not know is uh, like Nepal is endowed with like a very huge hydropower resources. So we claim that we have like a more than 43 gigawatt of commercially feasible hydropower resources. But unfortunately, electricity is available only to 40% of uh, total population of Nepal. And among them, uh, only 10% of rural population are access to the electricity till now. And, and more unfortunately, electrified settlements are also facing acute power shortages. So we have noticed that the film term capacity deficit raised more than 300 megawatts in the Nepalese power system of total with installed capacity of uh, 617 megawatts. So, so due to these reasons, like the National Utility Company, Nepal Electricity Authority is forced to set the load to, as an ultimate tools to balance the supply and demand. So we are only already observed like a 16-hour load setting in early 2009. Now let's uh, switch to the, the Mustang district where I did my uh, I did my research. So Mustang is situated in trans Himalayan regions of Western Nepal uh, in this direction. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most famous tourist and religious destinations in Nepal. And it is situated uh, in the elevation ranging from 2,000 meter. So starting elevation is 2,000 meter. So you can uh, imagine the topography easily. And it's, uh, the topography is very long with slope more than 30 degree in 83% of the total areas of the district. And like I did study only in the upper uh, lower Mustang. So you can see the landscape, there are a few landscape of the study uh, area. And this, uh, the right one shows the wind measurement areas uh, where like ABC installed the anemometers a uh, few years before. Now let's discuss about the electricity supply, how the electricity is being supplied in lower Mustang. So formerly like there was one uh, small hydropower of install capacity 240 kilowatt and it was supplying all these load centers and it was formerly owned by the uh, utility company uh, National Nepal Electricity Authority but now it has been leased to the private company named Swift Power Supply for operation and maintenance but in latter days this, uh, the area is also complemented with the national grid so the now the problem is like as I told you before, that the load setting is very common in Nepal. So, uh, and uh, in latter days, the demands in those load centers has been increased very much. Uh, like now you can find the five-star hotel in Jomsum. So the demand has been increased uh, increased considerably in short amount of time. So when there is no uh, national grid, uh, then then this small hydropower project is one responsible to meet all this demand of this load center. Uh, which is like not possible. As a result, like the load saving is also prone in that area. But it should be noted that like uh, the load saving like like uh, Jomsom and Kagbeni, it has got very good wind resources in Nepal. And we have uh, more, uh, interestingly, we have like wind data for more than five years in that area. So my, uh, like, uh, so the objective of the study was like accessing the optimal te technical solution based on this wind hybrid system to supply reliable power 
in study area. The weak, weak grid, I mean like a reliable power, uh, reliability. And to access the generation cost of the proposed hybrid system. And finally, uh, and also the calculated the generation cost of the wind energy alone. So I was in, uh, pretty much interested to know that what will be the <coughs> cost of energy for the wind energy in Nepal. So I did uh, it as well. And analyzing the financial viability of wind energy system with present policy supports. Okay, now let's discuss about the operation strategy of the proposed system. On this my, my whole uh, analysis and uh, analysis was based upon I, I developed Excel, uh, Excel based spreadsheet model uh, using hourly data, uh, hourly wind data, and uh, demand data of those load centers. So first of all, first of all, like uh, the, the system will measure the local demand. And it will be tried to supply uh, with the, wind ener the energy from wind energy. And if the si supply equals to demand, then it will be run as it is. Otherwise, if the supply is greater than demand, it will be exported to the grid. If not, then hydropower will come into operations. And again, the system will check if the si uh, supply equals to demand or not. If yes, it will be run as it is. Otherwise, uh, it will check if the supply is again. It will check if the supply is greater than demand or not. If yes, it will be again exported to grid. Otherwise, uh, it will check if the power is available in the grid or not. If the power is available in the grid, the, the power, it will uh, import from the grid. And finally, if no, there will be load shedding. But in my calculation, I have uh, limited my uh, um, uh, analysis up to this level only because it's very hard to get uh, to find the, uh, the data so when there will be power available or when there will be not be power available in the grid of that areas. So now let's switch to wind data analysis and selection of wind turbine model. So for wind data analysis, I use a uh, software called WindGrabber, which is like quite common uh, for this wind data analysis and energy distributions. And I found like the annual average speed of around 3.639 meter per second at anemometer height of 10 meter and 6.88 at 20 meters. So if you see the diurnal speed, you, know, you can find the wind speed is very pretty low in the morning and it uh, increases, it starts to increase from 10 o'clock and it, around 2 or 3, the, uh, it reaches to a maximum. So this is like, this wind pro profile is uh, quite like, uh, it's almost same throughout the year. Okay. Now if you see the correlation between the wind, uh, local wind, uh, wind conditions and the local demand and you can see that the correlation is like a, not too much strong, it's partially correlated at the evening but in the morning so uh, there is no wind so you don't have like a more possibility to use wind on the morning time. So you need like it is also justified you need to have some other uh, energy system for the uh, better reliability of power supply in that area. And the peak demand in the morning is around 600 kilowatt, and at the beginning it's 900 kilowatt. Now let's see the ex extreme wind speed. So in 2001, so wind speed of like a 75.61 meter per second was observed. Yeah, I, I was wondering if it was like wrong or not, but I checked the wind speed in, this was in 20, 20 meter per second. In 10 meter also it was so the, like a similar value. So it, I guess it must be, might be right. And the forecast shows even more higher values, 91.7 meter per second within 20 years written beer. So like a class four or five hurricane. So it's like really challenging uh, to uh, select uh, like a wind turbines which can withstand such a high wind speed. So, so when I see this wind data, I, I, I become sick. <laughs> So the major challenge was the possible maximum uh, wind speed uh, and another was the poor infrastructure situation of Kargeni. So you can see the road condition here and this is a, like a real challenge. You can see the top sharp bend there and the road with this was such high gradient so it is not much. It's almost possible to transport the wind turbine that you saw us yesterday. So, so instead, like, a, but, uh, I, I tried to find, I, I tried to like, a, uh, I made lots of study there, but I didn't find any wind turbine which can withstand such a high wind speed there. Again, but like, I choose this uh, wind turbine because 
due to its following exclusive features. It, because it can be lowered during high speed by like a f single persons within like a few, uh, half an hour. We don't need heavy cranes for installations. And simple fork lift can be used for lowering and erecting. So due to these features, I use uh, these turbines. And the blade are not also too long. So I think it's around, I forgot, 12 meter. And I asked with the chopper, the pilots, if it's possible for uh, him to transport to that jumps to jumps or not. And he was not much sure, but like uh, he told me that okay, in, uh, in the calm <laughs> condition, it may be possible. Now let's switch to wind hydro system sizing. I will not go after the detail. I will show the main slides only. So first of all, selection of hydropower size. So. They're in the y-axis, they're yearly unmet load hours, means the, the hours at which the demand uh, is greater than supply. And in the axis, you have a different size of hydropower. So you can see the minimum unmet load hour is, uh, the, the un yearly unmet load hour is minimum when the hydropower size is uh, 600 kilowatt. It's due to like, a, I show you the, the demand curve of the areas before. So in six months. and after that it increase, increases, uh, but for my uh, calculations I choose uh, like a 650 as an optimum size. Now see, see the selection of wind turbine, number of wind turbines and storage volume. So uh, in earlier slides I saw like a 650 uh, kilowatt is chosen as optimum size, but the hydropower but I saw before it was uh, it's just uh, 240 kilowatts. So uh, my idea was to upgrade the size of hydropower by increasing the reservoir size. So here is a, like a, also the uh, unmet load hour versus storage volume with for a different number of wind turbines. So you can see with four uh, wind turbine generators, you have like lots of uh, unmet load hour. But if you see from four to six, uh, you have considerable. Um, um, you can decrease the unmet load hour considerably, but after that the gap is becoming lower and lower. So it's like a uh, there is no hidden. Uh, I think there is no hidden, like a concrete uh, uh, solution. Like a like there is no like a, you can say which is the, like a particular combination will be right. Uh, it's partly depend upon like economic conditions also, economic analysis. However, like I choose uh, eight number of wind turbines and sixty five. 100 meter cube of storage volume uh, for my analysis. And with these combinations, the on load load uh, can be reduced uh, to 189 hours per year, like which is around half an hour per day. And I, th I think it's a good compared to 16 hour load setting. So, so, mm -hmm. so this is like a uh, the profile which, which you can observe while combining the loads and the supply. Uh, yeah, the the early, the early graph is like kind of amazing. I do not give you clear pictures, uh, so I, cho I, I choose like a, a particular day of the year. So you can see like that this is the, um, the demand of the area. So this is the energy supply, supply from the wind energy with that eight number of wind turbines. And here is the like a power you can get from hydropower. So most of this unmet load is appear in this period of time. I, I don't know, 9 o'clock in the morning. It's due to the uh, reasons that in the morning you don't have wind, uh, so you have to operate the hydropower. So uh, what happened is that in the lower, uh, when the river, uh, the flow in the river is low, uh, the water will be finished soon. So you will have like a, a no more water to operate the hydropower in this region, in this time. So most of the unmute load I appear are in that period. Now financial analysis. 